Hello, my friends. How's it going? Welcome to BFR Tuesday. My name is Ed Lacara. My hair is a mess. Oh my goodness. This is what happens with uh, when you've been in segregation for like weeks and weeks and weeks. Okay. Gotta get this taken care of ASAP. I'm a mess. Okay. So welcome to, uh, to BFR Tuesday, where today we're going to talk about a new study that came out using a uh, pulse oximetry uh, unit compared to the gold standard, your friendly neighborhood Doppler ultrasound to establish arterial occlusion pressures or LOP. So I'm going to, uh, under poll, I'm going to share this poll right now. And I would love for everybody to take this poll. I think, yeah, go to polls on the top right. Oh, it's saying I haven't shared any. Hi, Patricia. Uh, Oh, got it. Share now. Got it. Just shared it. So what I'm asking is, if you are doing BFR, who's doing limb occlusion pressure on every session? Who's doing it weekly? Who's doing it every four weeks? Who's doing it never? So thanks for filling that out. Gives me an idea of where we're at. <clears throat> All right, cool. So never, okay, okay, cool. Now what the what surveys have shown, I think Patterson did a survey back in 2018 with certified BFR uh, providers was that most people were not doing LOPs. Um, so I, I think that's really interesting because maybe it freaks me out um, and maybe because um, I'm working with some compromised individuals in here I tend to do an LOP. The research, I mean, really says you should do it about every four to eight weeks. I tend to do it a little bit more. Um, I definitely do it probably more than I need to. Um, I just want to make sure I'm using the right pressures. It only takes me a minute. I'm pretty, after teaching it and doing it now for so long, I'm pretty, I'm pretty quick with it. So it's not a big deal, but I understand why there's a limiting factor, which is number one, you have one of these guys, Doppler ultrasound. Um, and that's what this little, uh, that's what this webinar is going to be about is really discussing this paper. So let me share this paper with you. Um, it's under handouts. Oh, I already shared it. So you guys can download. Looks like people have already downloaded this. This is the study. I highlighted some areas that I thought were interesting. Um, so let me open this guy up. And so I'm going to share my screen and I guess I should ask, does anybody have any questions before I jump in? And what we're talking about is establishing what somebody's arterial occlusion or AOP is so that um, we understand what pressure to use. Let me ask, let me see these questions. If your diet and hydration is generally consistent, and if you check your LOP a few times and it's consistent. Uh, Lewis, I, I, no, probably not. You're probably okay with, I would at least check it probably every four weeks, four to eight weeks, just do a quick scan. And it doesn't even need to be with an L, with a um, Doppler. What I'll do a lot of times is I'll just take a pulse I'll put the cuff on, I'll inflate. When that pulse goes away, I get an indication. It's within five or 10 millimeters of mercury. We're okay. Um, James is asking, we do it on the first session. How much does it change from the original one every four weeks? It'll change a little bit. It won't change a lot. Um, it really, it depends more on your body position. So I did a, um, I did a webinar a few weeks ago. Your, your supine position, where I might take it doing a glute bridge or a non-weight bearing isometric for the upper extremity, or I might be using it in a non-weight bearing position, the BFR meaning it. If I switch to a sitting or a standing exercise, I will definitely do it because your LOPs are going to be way higher um, in a seated to um, a seated and standing compared to supine position. So. Definitely do it if you're changing body position. 
Um, but other than that, I mean, you know, I think you're, I think you're okay, especially in a non-compromised individual. Now, when I'm with somebody that I'm probably being a little, um, you know, like I don't always follow exactly what, um, the recommendations are because I've got patients that will say like, Hey, nobody else is doing anything for me. I understand the risks, you know, like an example I can give you is somebody with a, um, with lymphedema. We're not supposed to do LLP or we're not supposed to do BFR with them, but when they're losing muscle and they're just begging you to help them and you don't think that there are any increased risk and the biggest risk they're going to have is an aggravation of, of that lymphedema. We have a conversation, we use light pressures, we undercook before we overcook, and at least we're able to get a little bit of work done. So using it with compromised individuals, I think is a lot different. That's the whole reason that I went to LOP because originally I was using a different cuff and it um, and we weren't able to establish LOP. There's a lot of cuffs out there. You can't even establish LOP because they have made them in a way that can't fully occlude arterial flow. So you really have no idea where you're starting from, which is what we would consider an arbitrary pressure. Just, just guessing. Okay. So let's, um, let me see. Is there any other questions? Jeremy, new to BFR, pre-ordered the smart cuffs, trying to learn more. Awesome. Which you, you kindly quickly detail limb occlusion. Sure. Happy to. All right. So let me grab a cuff. In the upper extremity, I put a cuff on. I'm like, I'm having a tough time today, for sure. Okay, I put a cuff on. Of course, we're putting it up as high as we can go. And I rotate this stem so that it is facing me. I put the cuff on as tight as I can and as high as I can before we even start. Okay, so I got my cuff on. Stem is facing forward, so then that way it's easy for me to connect. I've got my pump. I click, click that little metal piece. Where is it? Click that little metal piece. Put that on. Now, at this point, we have what we're, what we're doing right now is free flow, 100% arterial flow in, 100% venous return out. So it's a hundred percent, hundred percent. Now I start to inflate. So I close my valve. I start to inflate at some point, right around 120 to 140 in the upper extremity, you're going to see the pulse go away. Now, how do we measure if that pulse goes away? Number one, we can do just a straight pulse. Okay. I'm just taking my pulse. When that pulse disappears, that is arterial occlusion pressure, the least amount of pressure necessary to cause occlusion. The second way is through using Doppler ultrasound. With this, this sometimes gives me feedback when I do this near my microphone, but let me try. I turned it on. You can see the little green light. You can hear it. I use a little gel in order to conduct. Now you guys can sh hopefully can hear that. All right, so Jeremy, you hear that. Okay, now if I inflate this cuff until I no longer hear that pulse, that's my arterial occlusion pressure, also known as your limb occlusion pressure the least amount of pressure necessary to fully occlude both arterial and venous blood flow. Is everybody cool with that? Perfect, okay. So that's LOP. And then in the upper extremity, we use something between 40 and 50% LOP. In the lower extremity, we lose, use something like 60 to 80% LOP, nothing less than 130 millimeters of mercury for aerobic of the lower extremity. So if I go for a walk, I just tell, especially people that I'm, that I'm consulting with, with distance virtually, and they don't have a Doppler, I'll just tell them to start with 130 and we'll do a, a perceived exertion. Nothing above an eight out of 10 perceived exertion when we're doing the exercise. 
Okay, so now that's LOP. Now this is a little cumbersome, let's be honest. I've gotta have an extra piece of equipment. I've only got two hands. I'm, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on here. And that's why our next version of this has a Doppler built in and a pump built in. You're just gonna be able to type in, I want 50% LOP and it's gonna inflate the cuff. I'm gonna take it off. I'm gonna put it on the other side, inflate the cuff and you're gonna be good to go, okay? I mean, it's gonna be nice. Until then, we gotta figure out what pressures to use. All right, so. Gold standard in the research is using this guy, or it's built into the equipment. Now remember, the reason we did this versus the built-in was because the built-in was so expensive, $6,000 or so to get started with a single cuff. What we tried to do is make this stuff affordable so everybody can use it. So what we have to look for is if this is cumbersome, if this is difficult, what, can, what else can we do to try to determine what pressures to use so that the pressures are both safe and effective. So that's what this study is all about. So let's take a look at this study. I think, let me see how many people downloaded. 13 people have downloaded. So if you haven't downloaded, this article I pulled for you is um, in the handout section. Okay, and so I'm gonna pull this up and I'm going to share my screen. Okay, so should be here. You guys should start to see this now. So this was a study done just recently, re just recently let out Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research. This was the uh, pre, so this was released early. So you'll be able to read this. I'm not gonna read the whole thing, but what it's doing is it's comparing a pulse ox, a finger pulse ox, which looks like this. Here's my pull socks. Okay, so if I put this guy on my finger, it's going to determine how much how much um, my pulse is, which is typically how people use it. They use it for pulse, which is that 94. And then they're also using it for my um, oxygenation of my limb. So I'm at 95 and my heart rate's about 81. Clearly I'm excited to talk to you guys, okay? Because normally my resting is right around 56 or 57, okay? So what they wanted to see is can we use this guy compared to this? Now the question becomes is how do I use this? So we're gonna try it. I don't know, I've never done this before. so. Let's try it out. So I'm gonna put the cuff back on. And I'd love to do that when I'm on video. Okay, so I put the cuff back on. All right, so I'm gonna attach. Now what you're looking for, I'm gonna to try to get this close. Okay, what you're looking for is when that little, that line that's going up and down goes away. There's no more pulse. That's what that's measuring. So I start to inflate, I'm trying to get this lined up for you. Now you'll also see, you should see There, there it goes. No longer reading, no longer a pulse. I'm letting the air slowly drip out and it'll start to come back. Now my arm is bent, so it's a little, it's a little funky in order for you guys to see. Because I have the cuff still plugged in, 
it's leaking a little bit of air. That's on purpose because that that plug is pushing on the stem. So if I detach that, then you don't lose any air. So, but this is on purpose because I'm starting to see where where we are. Now this is just about to come. There we go. Should be here soon. There it goes. Starting to come back. I, I can feel it in my limb. And the pulse ox is always a little delayed. It might be because my arm is straight ahead. So let me see. Now I'm seeing that pulsation. It's not reading my, but you can see the pulsation of the, um, of that little bar. And that means that I've got the pressure. Okay. Okay, so that's what they tried to do in this study was compare using LOP for when that arterial occlusion pressure goes away versus when they're using the uh, pulse ox in order to find out when that uh, pressure is going away. So hopefully that makes sense. All we're doing is determining when, the, when you lose arterial occlusion or arter artery. Okay. So Let's go through this study. So let me share this guy. All right, so I highlighted some of these areas for you. Um, again, the researchers are saying the most appropriate application of pressure requires measuring the pressure necessary to completely occlude arterial flow, referred to as arterial occlusion pressure. I tend to use the term LOP or limb occlusion pressure. Same thing. In the laboratory and clinical settings, use of Doppler ultrasound equipment is considered the gold standard. That is my white thing that I was using. Um, here is number 25, I believe, is the reference to Patterson's survey on when people do or do not use or find LOP. So what they did is they used both the handheld Doppler, and they also used the pole socks. Um, and I'm not familiar with this pole socks, but I'm sure that is very similar to what I just used. It's just a finger pole socks. Um, and they had two different people that they were uh, having measure. One measured the pole socks, one measured the, um, one used the Doppler with a uh, headphone so the other person couldn't hear it. 70 individuals, just about half men, half women. And there was only one time where they were off by 10 millimeters of mercury. Otherwise, they were within about 10 millimeters of mercury. And again, you can read through this. Um, but basically what they found and is, is they felt that using the, they found using the um, pulse ox can be just as effective to figure out when that pulse goes away, which would mean that you're at limb occlusion pressure or AOP, and it could be an alternative to using the um, um, Doppler ultrasound. So that's an alternative to this. Again, I also teach this. What you're trying to just do is make sure that you're close because you're always gonna take a percentage of that LOP anyway, 40 to 50% in the upper extremity, 60 to 80% in the lower extremity. Okay, so what are some limitations on this study? Number one is we don't know anything for the lower extremity. This was only for the upper extremity. Can I put the pulse socks on my toe? Hasn't been validated, I don't know. Is it possible? I guess, I have no idea. Um, uh, what other limitations are there? Not much, I guess. It'd be pretty easy to have. I mean, these are cheap. I bought this one. Where'd it go? I bought this pulse socks at CVS. You know, it was like 15 bucks. Very cheap, easy. Um, 
I also use this when people are on the treadmill for when I'm doing my training uh, so they can measure their um, pulse easily. Okay, what questions? So Patricia, LOP is different than the is different than the pulse ox. I'm guessing that's what you're saying is LOP is different. Um, yeah, LOP is different than the pulse ox. I mean, it's the, you're using the pulse ox in order to determine LOP, but as you get lower and lower and lower, you'll start to not pick it up like you saw with me. You know, you can't look at like um, zero oxygen saturation and assume that that's LOP because you're still gonna have oxygen saturation in there in the muscle, even if you're totally occluding. Lewis, I thought pulse ox was only good according to the research for the arm. That is true, it's only good for the arm. Uh, it doesn't work well for the lower extremity. You're absolutely right. Lewis, a related question about proper cuff inflation. What I'm finding is that after inflating to my target, if you flex your arm, for example, and check the pressure again, it changes more pressure than recheck again, pressure is usually less. What is, what is, what I find is that setting the target pressure in this way results in too much discomfort while exercising. Okay, here's what you do. Okay, it's a really good question. And it's one of the limitations of our system. Because that the pump is not connected to it all the time, you know, we had to choose, do you have a pump connected to it all the time or can you take the cuff off, the pump off so you can jump in the pool, push a sled. I don't got this expensive thing attached to my athlete who will break it, I will guarantee you. So. This is what you do. You, this is a workaround. Let's say my LOP is in my upper extremity. Well, I know where it is. It's 122. So I connect. I got my cuff. I inflate to 61, because that's where I would train at. So I'm at 61, I detach. Now I do a isometric, 1001, 1002, relax. 1001, 1002, relax. Then I reattach and I, yeah, you're gonna lose a little bit of pressure so then you re-pressurize to that 61 and you'll be right on. Why that happens is because basically you're getting all the wrinkles out of the, of the cuff. You're getting it so it fits onto the limb. Depending on where the, the peak uh, muscle size is and other things, it kind of influences the pressure. So do a two second isometric times two and then go in and do your exercises and that We'll do it. So recheck one time only is sufficient. Yeah, that should be it. That's all you need. Uh, so that's an answer to that, Lewis, for you. Okay. I'm new. Pre-ordered smart cuffs. Do we do LOP? No, you won't need to with the pre-ordered smart cuffs. You'll um, you'll you'll have a pump that automatically calculates for you, and you'll do forty percent to start off with in the upper extremity, and you'll do. 50% or 60% in the lower extremity. You'll do that for about a week or so, then you'll start bumping it up. Um, if you're not sure about that, uh, do my BFR 101 course, which is free. It's two hours of talking about all this LOP and starting people off and blah, blah, blah. Um, the only other thing I can add is that um, I've had a lot of requests for uh, virtual coaching. So um, I've started to use the app Trainerize. So I'll have programs built. I'm gonna work this weekend on shooting some video for those. And I'll lay out like a 30 day uh, training program for folks. So that way they safely and effectively week, month one will be getting used to the cuffs, lower pressures, isolated exercises, almost like my um, BFR 30 day challenge where you're gradually increasing over time. Okay, I went a little long today, 125. Um, that's good. Got to get back to patients. So uh, any questions before we check out? Again, thank you guys so much for joining every Tuesday, about 25 minutes or so, no longer than that. Um, I jump on and um, we like to chat about BFR. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much and um, I'll see you next week.
Uh, my BFR 101 course. Mm. Uh, Patrick, yes, yeah, safe to swim with the cuffs. Um, let me find Jeremy. Let me go to. Let me find that for you. Let's see. BFR 101. Where's the best place to get that? I think the best place is to go to YouTube. Oh, you know where the best place to get that is? Is um, go to smart cuffs or smart tools plus.com and then education. I think that's right. Yeah, so uh, I'm going to put this in here. You can go right there. It's a free download. Yeah, of course. My pleasure, Jeremy. Thanks for joining. Really appreciate it. All right. I'm really out this time. You guys have a great week.